Hello friends, Opera Starsky reporting from Kyiv, Ukraine. It's been a while, but we are back with the updates. And today is day 565 of the Russia's invasion of democratic Ukraine. 580 Russian supremacists were toasted by the Ukrainian defenders yesterday. Also impressive number of Russian artillery systems were destroyed. 28 of them were hit and one captured intact. Last month, the Russian invaders launched continuous attacks near Kupiansk, uh, trying to stretch our reserves. Their attacks were supported by numerous artillery systems, shelling mostly civilian residential buildings, because that's uh, exactly what the Russian terrorists do, uh, trying to kill as many Ukrainian civilians as possible. And uh, the reason is uh, they consider all Ukrainians as their enemies. As you may have already realized, the main goal of the Russian supremacists is deleting Ukraine from the map. As of today, besides destroying numerous civilian buildings and infrastructure, Russian invaders were not able to gain any success near Kupiansk. Also expecting the upcoming liberation of Bakhmut, terror Russians attempted failed attacks near Zaliznyanske, Rihovo Vasilivka and Bogdanivka. Meanwhile, the Ukrainian defenders gained partial success near Klishivka and Andreevka. Two more square kilometers were cleared from the Russian invaders around Bakhmut this week, according to the reports of the General Staff of Ukraine. Also, Ukrainian defenders acquired partial control of the town of Opetna. At this point, we can see intensive dynamic combat in this area, and the situation is still very unstable, so we will keep watching development in this area. South of Robotina, the Ukrainian defenders keep trying to break through the most prepared lines of the Russian defense with partial success. In this area, we can see that the terror Russian troops are unable to perform any significant counteroffensive. In general, almost 257 square kilometers were liberated by the Ukrainian defenders in the south Ukraine since the beginning of the Ukrainian counteroffensive. Meanwhile, on the occupied territories, the Russians decided to play this uh, ridiculous game uh, called elections. It was like this. Last year they captured pieces of Kherson and Zaporizhian Oblast, and even without having full control over those territories, they were officially annexed by the Russian invaders and pronounced uh, as territories of the Russian Federation. Now they've lost even more territories, but uh, despite this fact, the Russians report that 80% of the population on the annexed territories voted for the Putin's party and 100% votes were processed in just a single night. This is how democracy works in Russia. And uh, it's like annexing territories without completely controlling them and holding elections and pretending the whole region voted. But the word Russia and democracy simply don't combine no matter what. A uh, funny situation happened with uh, Sergei Girkin, Russian terrorist, responsible for invading Ukraine in 2014 and shooting down civilian Boeing with 298 people on board. As you probably know, he got arrested for criticizing Putin, also known as Huilo, uh, and now all his supporters are facing a problem. They cannot protest against Girkin's arrest because it's only possible in the democratic countries. And all these years, they were doing everything possible to combat democracy in Russia and abroad. Uh, that's why now they feel really, really upset, but they can't talk openly about it. And the uh, same picture with Prigozhin, eliminated by Vladimir Khuylo last month. And same with Pavel Gubarev, by the way. Pavel Gubarev was Girkin's best friend. He was assigned as a leader of the separatist territories of Donbass. Basically, ethnic Russian Sergei Girkin helped him to acquire power in Donbass. Now, Gubarev uh, officially denies their friendship and criticizes Girkin for criticizing Putin, apparently because he doesn't want to end up behind the bars in a Russian prison. Specifically, Pavel Gubarev said that it was Girkin's fault because Girkin shared his intention to participate in the presidential elections in Russia and Putin uh, put him in jail. Obviously, because you cannot have other presidents in Russia than Putin, and uh, again, we're talking about the Russian democracy here, which already sounds ridiculous. One year ago, terror Russian troops uh, took Lysychansk, losing thousands of healthy Russian men to the Ukrainian fire. 
This is how the local supermarkets look like in the area. Everything looted and destroyed. And, of course, Russian occupiers don't care about renovating the city because it's not their intention to do so. This is exactly how the occupied cities look nowadays, just so, so you could understand what the so-called Russian world is all about. And the most exciting news for the Russian citizens is that, according to our information, a new mobilization is coming in the terrorist federation. This time the terrorist uh, cannibals are going to mobilize between 400 and 700,000 men to die in Ukraine. And of course, we will do everything to provide such opportunity. My name is Operator Starsky reporting from Ukraine. As always, be safe.